High definition laryngology is that combination of high technology and low technology that when combined puts the most pixels on a screen for diagnosing voice disorders. There are several keys that lay a foundation for accurately viewing the larynx. One, a device is needed to see the vocal cords because they're not in a direct line of sight for the naked eye. Two, an endoscope is better than a mirror because you can record from it and magnify the image on a monitor. Chip and rigid endoscopes offer clearer views than first generation fiber optic endoscopes. A stroboscope further clarifies motion on the vocal cord margins where sound is produced and hoarseness occurs. Lastly, a recording device is the most essential component. Both audio and video need to be recorded in order to review this multiple times and often to find the details of where hoarseness is occurring. A case study will be helpful in clarifying why even high definition equipment might not lead to high definition laryngology. After general anesthesia for mitral valve surgery and a prolonged intubation, her voice was weak and later she developed dyspnea. Yet multiple tests and many physicians seen over a six month period didn't lead to a correct answer. Here's a typical standard definition view and it's one that I took when I first saw her. We can see that both vocal cords don't open very widely and that she has strider. In fact, the right vocal cord is lax from her recent Botox injection and Bernoulli effect draws it inward when she inspires. Using low technology, topical lidocaine, and then passing the same endoscope close into the larynx and into the posterior commissure now yields the diagnosis how many of you seeing this portion of the exam would order a ventilation perfusion scan, perform a laryngeal EMG, put on a proton pump inhibitor for several weeks, or inject the vocal cord adductor muscles with botulinum toxin? I think we could fairly call the picture on the left zero definition laryngology. That is, there was no pixel on the pathology because of the arytenoids. While in the view on the right, we probably have 200 by 200 pixels showing us the posterior subglottic web. Let's look at some rigid endoscopic views from the perspective of equipment and technique. Here's a rigid endoscopic standard definition view, 640 by 480 pixels. Here is a similar view using a high definition endoscope, 1920 by 1080 pixels. We can compare the relative sizes in this image and see that the definition is certainly improved in the larger image. We can also utilize low technology and twist the camera 90 degrees on the endoscope head. This gives us more screen real estate to look at the margins of the vocal cords by aligning them with the long edge of the camera. Additionally, since we've recorded the image, we can slow it down with the computer and look at the inferior and superior lips and see exactly where the pathology lies. Move a 70 degree endoscope closer to the larynx, attach it to a high definition camera and we get images such as these of the vocal cord margins. Other low technology techniques that get more pixels on the pathology are to get anatomic obstructions out of the way. Using an E vowel will expose more of the larynx and then having the patient phonate at a high pitch will augment any lesion on the vibratory margins. Let's compare the intersection of low technology and high technology when trying to get pixels on the vocal cords with a flexible endoscope. First of all, closeness matters. I've reviewed many tapes where this is the closest anyone gets to a larynx. And there are times when you can't see the vocal cords and having only three frames to look at the vocal cords during an entire examination is not enough to tell you anything about the larynx. We can hardly see the vocal cords in this patient at low pitch, but increasing the pitch exposes the margins of the vocal cords. So for the overwhelming cost of asking your patient to raise their pitch, you've improved the view. Closeness matters for more than just getting more pixels on the screen, especially with fiber optic endoscopes it gets more light on the larynx. This is the same person on the same day and merely moving the endoscope closer to the vocal cords on the right increases the amount of light and reduces the digital noise. The automatic gain function in your camera is something most people ignore, but it clearly affects both the color of the larynx, that is the redness of digital noise, as well as the clarity. And here is the same person on the same day with a fiber optic view on the left and a distal chip view on the right. Again, the clarity is improved with the technology, there's no more moray effect on the right, and the additional light passing through the chip endoscope 
reduces the digital noise and the redness of the image. There are currently three main levels of definition available to the typical examiner. Standard definition at 480 pixels in vertical height, high definition at 720 pixels in vertical height, and another version of high definition at 1080 pixels in vertical height. You can see the relative size differences in these two videos between standard and high definition. You can also see that the aspect ratio is different at 4 to 3 in standard definition and 16 to 9 or a cinnamon aspect ratio at the 1080 level. Another high technology approach to improving the definition of an image is with selective color filtering available from several companies. With the distal chip endoscopes, vasculature can be highlighted with these color filters, making it easier to appreciate some types of pathology. Let's combine high and low technology here in one particular individual. We have a high definition flexible chip camera. We turn on the selective color filtering and we can see the pathology and its interaction with the surrounding vasculature. After topical lidocaine, we can move closer. We can see beneath the vocal cords and into the laryngeal ventricles. In fact, let's compare it to the same patient in the operating room. We have a high definition camera on the microscope and we can see that our office view is nearly equivalent. Sometimes we can obtain a high definition view by the use of perspective. Here we have a rigid view which is looking down directly from above at the vocal cords. It's apparent that we don't have opening and closing or abduction and adduction of the right vocal cord. But this doesn't really explain the quality of her voice. As long as two equal vocal cords meet in the midline, they should vibrate symmetrically and create a clear sound. We need to explain this flutter or roughness in the voice. We can do that with a flexible viewpoint. Even though this is a lower resolution endoscope, this fiber optic view up close after topical lidocaine shows us the huge mass difference between the right and left vocal cords. It is both a tension and this huge mass difference that generates two pitches when the person passes air between the vocal cords. The two different complementary views give us the necessary high definition perspective to understand the vocal quality. It's much like the Google Maps view of the earth. Looking down from above and looking at an angle gives you additional perspective to understand the problem. Even light is reflected differently from the vocal cords on rigid and flexible views. Here in the rigid viewpoint, I'm having a difficult time perceiving what is creating a difference in vibration between the right and left vocal cords. But when I use a flexible chip view and I get close, the lighting angled across the vocal cords reveals the raised lesion on the left vocal cord. Again, this is much like our Google Maps view looking straight down from above versus looking along the length of the vocal cord. High definition laryngology begins even before the endoscope goes in the patient's nose. Here I'm looking and I don't see much. It's a high definition exam. I've turned on the color filters and I still don't see a visual problem. I even get out the rigid endoscope and take a look and it's not immediately apparent what the problem is. However, I have listened to her voice. While her reading voice is quite clear, Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. As she goes up in pitch, she has air leak or huskiness, and she reaches a point where the vocal cords stop vibrating, and she has a pitch break. Happy birthday to you. We can even hear a double pitch at one point. Happy birthday to you. Consequently, I know I need to look at the vocal cords vibrating at a high pitch in order to see the pathology. At a mid pitch, mucus signals to us that there's dampening of the motion of the vocal cord in the central portion where it accumulates. After clearing that, at a high pitch, we see two elevations which interrupt the mucosal wave and touch each other. These elevations are the cause of her pitch break separating the vocal cords into two vibratory segments at times. The swellings also create the gaps anteriorly and posteriorly that leak air and create white noise or the huskiness we hear in her upper singing voice. In summary, high definition laryngology is where you use the best endoscopes you have, zoom in, get close, turn on a strobe, use the best sounds, high pitch, slow down the video, rotate your camera, put as much light as you can on the subject, and view the vocal cords where you hear the pathology.